Do you know what happens when a giant redwood tree falls in the redwood forest? If there's anyone around here, it when a redwood tree falls, it just doesn't, doesn't. It's not like when you chainsaw it, when you cut it down, it doesn't go timber. It doesn't do that, okay? Because first of all, the roots under the ground, which aren't very deep, I'm gonna show you in a second, they snap, and then when the tree falls, it hits other trees and branches fall down. So it doesn't sound like boom. It sounds like snap, snap, snap. Boom, boom, because it's hitting other trees on the way down, knocking branches everywhere. <laughs> and then it goes, cha bong boom. It's crazy. Hey, keep it down. Let me come over here where I'm not disturbing everybody. So this is the underside of a redwood tree. See how big it is? So this was a giant, giant, 300 foot tall redwood tree. This is a massive redwood tree. And it fell over and you can see how shallow the roots were, okay? Very shallow and see how they broke off that was that snapping snap snap that I was talking about earlier. But what I like about it is redwoods don't support a lot of wildlife when they're alive because of tannins and stuff that makes redwoods red, repels a lot of insects. And that's why I don't hear a lot of birds in old growth forests it's because there's not a lot of insects to eat. But once they fall down like this and there's all the, on the underside of here, all these nooks and crannies, things can live in there. And we have some very cool things in the redwoods y'all don't know about, like rubber boas. Yes, we have rubber boas. Okay, it's a boa constrictor. Please don't take these home. People keep taking them home and that's why we don't have very much. So if you see them, just go, wow, they're cool. They have a fake head on the end of their tail so that predators strike that. So see what I mean by nooks and crannies? There is nooks and crannies, nooks and crannies. This is a big giant uh, log that fell down and you can see there's huckleberries, ferns, all kinds of stuff. Berries growing up there. How do those berries get up there? They got up there from a feathered behind who pooped out the seeds. So here's another nurse log. Super cool. All kinds of salal, all kinds of cool edible berries growing on it. They were put there via the birds. These logs will get really, really soaked during the winter and then they slowly release the moisture during the summer. And so a lot of plants that are growing on a nurse log get that water during the summer. So it's the hookup. Because redwood roots are so shallow, they usually entangle them with all the other trees in the area and hold each other up, which is why you should never plant with just one or two redwood trees in your yard because they will come down when the wind blows and it could do terrible things. But see, when one falls, there's other ones that fall. So usually if you find one that falls, you'll find a bunch in the area like this place. So besides the three we just passed, there's that one, there's that one, there's a bunch. And then you can even see the scar. See the scar on the side where the tree hit it and slid down and took off all the bark? When one tree falls, it loosens up the root connections. And so lots of other trees like this one fall after it. There's only 4.6% of the old growth redwood forest left. At Redwoods Rising, redwoodsrising.org. Go check us out. We're trying to restore like 70,000 acres of formally clear-cut forest and try to accelerate the successional stages so it looks like this sooner because there's only 4.6 percent of the old growth forest left and they're in little islands and we want to connect them all so that's what redwood rising does redwoodrising.org the more you know about your redwood forest your parks this is your park the more you know about it the more interested and engaged you're going to be while you're here so watch my videos so when you come here you know what to look for and enjoy it this place is magical